Jean asks, has your family ever encountered any racism since moving to the UK? Hi, I'm Blair. And I'm Mac. Today we're going to do a recap of our first year of living in the UK. One year. We've completed an entire year. Actually, we're past the year at this point. We're a little bit past that point, but we have lived outside of the United States now and in the UK for a year. And we just wanted to talk about what it's been like. There's some questions that people have submitted to us. We did a community post and a lot of people submitted questions. And to everyone who submitted questions in that community post, thank you for those questions. What we want to do, we want to just talk about those questions, talk about our experience a little bit of what it's been like for us and our family living here in the UK for one year. Yep. So before we get into the questions that were submitted, how's it been for you? First year. First year has been good. Um, it's, how, it's been a lot of fun, like uh, learning and, and doing things, acclimating to how things are done here in the UK. Um, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. change a thing about it. Yeah, so yeah, the first year uh, has definitely been different. It's been, a, it's been a unique time for us to all be living in, but it's, it has been well. It's been a really good year. We're, we're in England. We enjoy it. We have been able to take a trip up to Scotland as well, and Scotland is beautiful. We're looking forward in 2022 to making it to Wales and Northern Ireland. Uh, we're looking to continue to travel around the British Isles but I would say that year one has been good. The kids are in school, they're thriving, they're doing really mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Uh, our youngest is really picking up, I would call it a British accent. Yeah. He's only four. Uh, so we, we're getting like, we're getting, uh, we're getting, getting to that point now. Yeah. So do you regret moving? No, no, I don't regret moving at all. Um, we wanted to have new experiences, different experiences as a family. This has definitely been the opportunity to do that. Um, since moving here, we've had a ton of time to be able to be together as a family, experience different things together, and just enjoy each other. Yeah, we had some clear goals and objectives uh, when we wanted to move. Uh, to the UK when we wanted to leave the United States for, for work to come over here. We had some clear goals and objectives. I think we were doing that. One is that we really want to make sure we got our kids into good school systems. And we've been very pleased with the schools and the education that our children is getting. So that was a big thing for us. We wanted opportunity to kind of get away from some of that hustle and bustle. And also we wanted to be able to see the world a bit more. I'm very interested in a lot of different topics, to the castles, things that you've seen. If you look at this YouTube channel, if you could go through the playlist, there's a playlist dedicated to castles, there's a playlist dedicated to cities. You know, we've made it to Portugal so far this year. Uh, we want to continue to, you know, push into Europe, hopefully in 2022 and go and visit other places. So we felt like the UK would be a wonderful place, but we were pleasantly surprised and shocked actually at how much it is to do here. Yes. On the island? Yes. It's, uh, it's a lot. There's so much more than I think we anticipated before we got here. But hey, let's kind of work through some of the questions. We had a lot of questions, a lot of uh, things that were submitted. Let's, let's work through those and see if we can kind of answer some of those questions to, for some of the people that, that asked them. Okay. So first up we have, how do you feel about the work-life balance in the UK? Work-life balance is, uh, is good. Uh, we used to drive 55 miles, or Blair did it especially, I, I did it for a while, but Blair did it. 55 miles one way to get to work in the morning, 110 miles a day, and our commute now is about 15 minutes. So we went from an hour, hour and a half commute to 15 minutes. Right. And uh, at the end of the day, we're also home in about 15, 30, 40 minutes. You got to go shop and pick up the kids or whatever. But just, I think it's been wonderful. Uh, I have no complaints about work-life balance and workload and things of that sort. This, that's been really good, good experience. Yeah, I will say the kids, um, their commute is much shorter. We get to see them off in the morning. We get to pick them up in the morning. So all of that has worked well for us and we've been happy that it's worked well. Yeah. Um, next question, how do English people react when they hear your accents? Most people don't hear it. And actually it takes a couple of sentences before they catch on that we're not from here. Yeah, I, I don't 
find that many people catch it in the first couple words is is when you in which you're having a, a longer conversation but really it's always been well received uh when people do notice it's oh your accent it's like oh yeah you're american yes i'm, I'm an american oh where are you from and then everyone wants to talk to me about or, you know talk to myself and blair about where are we from in the states and a lot of people have family members and friends who are in the states or they visited the states typically places like new york city texas and california florida um those are the big places that most people always talk about where they've been we've been to those places as well so we had little conversations about it but it has never i've never had any experience of of any negativity uh, it's always been very positive everyone's kind of uh people are excited so especially when we, when we were in liverpool mm -hmm. when we were in liverpool I don't know if they run into a lot of Americans there, but it was, it was a lot of people who seemed pleasantly surprised yeah. to hear the yeah. American accent it's in, in Liverpool. Oh yeah, like, like Max said, it's really surprising to hear how many um, British people have been to the United States. And then when you start talking to them and they, start, and they name states like Arizona or Montana, and you're like, wow, that's, yeah, I yeah. haven't been there yet. I did meet a nurse who had spent several years in Arizona and actually in Arkansas where I'm from and that was shocking. Like you've been to Arkansas? No one goes there. So <laughs> uh that was that was that was good. Stefan asked what we would like to hear uh your your best impression of a UK accent um from the places that we've visited. So when we hear the accents, we yeah, we definitely can't tell you the difference between a, a Birmingham, a Birmingham or a Leeds accent. I I can't. Um, I can do the accent for maybe a sentence, but it it, it quickly fades. Yeah, I can't. I can't either. Uh, it is I can definitely hear differences when you get further away. Say the, the Scottish accent was much different than what we hear, and then the London Cockney accent is very recognizable we're we're here in the, the midlands and a lot of times i don't even hear the accent yeah. when i'm talking to people and as far as me doing a british accent i'm not i don't think i should embarrass myself like that it is not it is not good i've i've tried it only at home and it, and it doesn't it doesn't give me give me a little more time before <laughs> i foray into trying that yeah um, what are one or two things that our family cannot wrap our heads around about British society? Um, most everything we can we can understand or we see why it's done that way. Like, yeah, there's a there's a couple things that um, that that are shocking, and and you know what? I wanted to do a different video on this, but I'll talk about it a little bit right now. Uh, Traffic goes this way, and the fact that someone will park their car facing the opposite direction against, you know, park along the side of the road facing the opposite direction as oncoming traffic, uh, that would like never happen no. in the U.S. No. And and so a lot of the parking, um, what is acceptable here is is we drive and we see cars parked <laughs> where you're like just you're looking like I, I can't believe they parked like that. So the, the parking is, is one of the things that, that's kind of hard to wrap wrap my head around because uh, just it wouldn't would not fly. Your car would be towed so quickly. Yes. And ticketed. Um, are there things about UK life that you would want the US to adopt? Yes. Back to driving again. I hate to go back there. This is me. But I love the fact that the lights go red, yellow, green. Yes. And that, that it's absolutely that. something that, and, and, and I mean, to a Brit, it may not be, it may not seem like much because you're, you're very familiar with it. In the U.S., it goes red, green. You don't know when that light is going to go from red to green. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of, you're sitting there and if there's crosswalks and if there's, you know, for, for, uh, people crossing the street, you can see those counting down, you get an yeah. idea. But if no crosswalks, you're just guessing. You're just sitting there and you just, at any moment, it could just turn green. Right. And so I love the red, yellow, green. It seems simple, but it just really makes your driving uh, that much better. It's one example. Yes. Okay, SS asks, what made you decide to move to the UK and had we visited before? I've been here before. Um, I've come over for work trips before and spent time primarily in London, but no, never longer than say a week, but that was in 2005. It's a long time ago. 
maybe 2005. Yeah, yeah. I, I've come over before also for work and that was, that was good, but it was always just a couple of days um, with limited to exposure to London, so. Jean asks, has your family ever encountered any racism since moving to the UK? This and similar questions were asked several times on our community poll. Yeah, so this is a this is not a tricky one. This is a pretty easy one to answer. And I can unequivocally state that we have been all over the UK, the places we've been to so far, and we have not experienced any racism. Um, people have been extremely friendly. People have been opening. They have been welcoming. Uh, we haven't had people <laughs> Uh, treating us in any way different I have I just haven't experienced it and I was be you know very blunt with you I'm American I know what racism looks like and we haven't experienced it so there may be some micro things that I'm just not able to know because I'm just not culturally aware but racism as I know it I, I would say no we haven't experienced it what, what are your thoughts Blair? no I agree I agree I have not experienced any racism um, personally so yeah yeah i just feel like we have traveled freely across this country we get out of the car we go into stores we go running around castles we are in the malls where we have been into a lot of public places and uh, you, you know we did the uh the land rover show we've been to some great places so far and we plan to go to others but i just have not experienced that uh in any capacity uh in my time here in the uk that has been our experience you know other people may have their own experience but in my experience in my one year of living here um, that's been my that's my experience with it so far tell us about your neighbors our neighbors are great what do you got <laughs> I don't see our neighbors very often yeah, yeah so we don't see them very often because we live in a very rural environment but when we do uh, we we talk to them uh, our neighbors are, are really friendly our neighbors are helpful uh, our neighbors were trying to we went back to the states in august of this year and our neighbors had set up several things for us to go see as far as like farm shows as far as like there was a sheep show that we missed mm -hmm. and there were a couple other shows and things that we wanted to go to that we missed but our neighbors they went out and they were texting us and emailing us and saying hey you can you can go here and you can go there uh our neighbors have been wonderful yeah yeah, yeah. parents ask um, at the Birmingham Christmas Market, have you ever been to a pantomime? Uh, we have not experienced a pantomime yet as a family. I, I know that um, some of our kids have seen pantomime shows, but we haven't seen it all together. So. Yeah, our youngest went to one last week. I have never been. I will be completely honest with you. Until recently, I didn't even know it was a thing. Here. And then we did the we did the Christmas market video. A lot of people kind of put that in the comments, and and I really we learned a lot. We have learned a lot from the comments. Like people, all of you who have left comments throughout the year on these different videos about castles, cities, locations, places, events, things. We have learned a lot from all of the comments. A lot from everything that you've left us. So we. Uh, and that was where I first really learned that pantomime was a was a thing. It's not really a thing in the U.S. And honestly, I thought it was I thought it was French because every time in the so U.S. Too. we see a depiction of it, it's kind it's of a it's kind of like a French depiction of it. Yes. So I didn't even know it was a thing here in the U.K. But people had really suggested that we go to one, so we're gonna definitely do that. But the kids have already started going through schools. We haven't Blair and I haven't been yet though. No. Tina asks, how much longer are you going to live here and do you recommend people to come and experience living here as we have done? I would say yes. Come. Stay. Enjoy. <laughs> I would absolutely say yes. Um, we, we don't work visas. I think we'll be here for quite a while. Um, the, hopefully several more years. That's the, that's the plan. But for someone else to, if you get that opportunity, if you can make that opportunity, if you if you get that offer from a job or some other means to move over here, absolutely, absolutely. It's a great gateway into Europe uh, to be able to visit. And then there are a lot of wonderful things to visit in Scotland, England, Wales, Northern Ireland. There's just so many wonderful locations uh, and things to do here as well. So for me, I 100% yes, visit. Okay. 
K asks, what things do you find the UK does better than the US and what would you miss about the UK if you were in the US? I'll let you answer that one first. I've been <laughs> doing a lot. Go ahead. So, um, I think public transportation is really good. Um, every time that I've, I've, I've uh, ridden the, the tube or taken the train down to London, it's always been very... Um, it's very punctual. It's very much on time that I really enjoy. I also like the fact that you can pretty much do it around the clock. So you don't, you can be on a schedule, but if your schedule changes or moves a little bit, it's, it's fine. And that you, you still will make it, um, back home, public transport is not, it, yeah, it's not that, especially on the weekends, it's not that, um, consistent and reliable. Yeah, you really only have it in the major cities. Like, we don't live in a major city, but there's still transportation for, via the trains, the train network. The U.S. actually doesn't really do high-speed trains anyways. It's just not a cultural thing. U.S. is, everyone's driving. There's a bus, buses like Greyhounds, but they're not punctual or timely. Yeah. So, uh, the U, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, buses are not, they're not as punctual or timely, and their routes are very... They go all over all the place. Over, all over the place. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, there is there is a major train network in New York, um, but that is mostly just centralized in New York City. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's in the cities. We've done a lot during our first year. Anthony asks, what has been your highlight? I would say two. One in the UK and one outside of the UK. Uh, the first one for me would be Scotland. Edinburgh was beautiful we got it within the summer that was a lot of fun i really enjoyed that that trip walking around the city just yes. that was scotland is i just can't wait to get back scotland was wonderful that would be that would definitely be a highlight for me the, then the other highlight would actually be lisbon portugal and then down into the alcar to be able to go to portugal as well those would be the highlights for me for travel and just for experiences one in the uk and one outside yeah i think i liked um the, the highlights. I think Linda's Farm. I really liked the um, experience during a, a driving, a, a staycation vacation where you drive or cross country or across the country. I really liked it. Um, I think it was also a difference experiencing. I've never seen a causeway before that goes away because of of the tides, and I, I just think that was a great experience to have and to um, be able to tell somebody about. Yeah, well, yeah. When we got there the first day, we couldn't go over because we we mis misjudged the uh, the tides, and the causeway was covered. So, and then we went back like for several days later. That was yeah, that that was on the Scotland trip. That was heading up yeah. to Scotland, and, and then we heading up to Scotland. We missed it, so we caught it on the way home. But that was the Scotland trip. That would be definitely one of the highlights of the year. Was the road trip up to Scotland. Uh, briefly touched Glasgow, and then headed up to you know, started getting into the lower lower portions of the highlands yeah, yeah that was, was it's a good trip yeah mike asked are we going to do any more city breaks and we can't wait to do more city breaks um like brussels and amsterdam um but yeah that's going to be hopefully in 2022 when the, a lot of the things open up a little more we can travel a little more freely that again is one of the one of the benefits and joys of living here in england it gives you the opportunity to fly very easily and quickly within a couple hours into into uh, into Europe, so that is something that definitely is on the plans uh, in the books for us that we want that we really want to do. And then we have a list of UK cities that we still need to get to, and I want to get down into Wales. I think I mentioned before, so we're gonna get down to Wales. We still have to get to Manchester. There's a lot of places, and then Cornwall. Oh, yeah. So I don't want to start naming places because I'm gonna miss some, but there are definitely a lot of places still. Uh, that we need to get bath up into york there's just so many places here that we haven't been that we want to experience as well so locally within the uk yes a lot of places and then broadly across europe we're, we're looking forward to those experiences in the new year as well yeah so maria lane asks since living in the uk what british habit have you picked up that you will continue even when you return to the states yeah what do you have for that one um, probably carrying bags or taking bags like mm. when we go to stores. Yeah. That'll definitely continue. Um, just because it's helpful, it's useful. And uh, yeah, it's helpful and useful and it just makes sense. Uh, and also uh, 
probably more recycling like definitely probably more recycling yeah i think you know the u.s is a little behind on some of those things but definitely the bags and a lot a lot of the other we now do we have two recycle we have a recycle uh we have three actually broken out we're doing more recycling here for our garbage rubbish so we're doing more recycling here for that and i think that's probably something we definitely need to and will continue to carry forward no matter where we live we'll, we'll continue to carry that forward so that sums it up everyone thank you so much for joining in for our one year summary of living in the uk um, i hope you enjoyed our q a thank you for liking and subscribing to our channel <laughs> we just reached our 10,000 subscriber mark and we couldn't be more ecstatic about it we hope to see you in the new year all right take care take care